Hey guys, welcome back to My Colourful Country Life. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing another topic I get asked about a lot, and that is how I break in a new colouring book to get my colouring pages to sit nice and flat. Uh, before I show you the actual breaking in of a colouring book, I want to discuss binding first, as this is an important factor in getting your books to lay nice and flat. If you are thinking of skipping straight to the breaking in demo, I do suggest you listen to this info first as my method won't work for all types of binding. So colouring books come in various types of bindings. Now, the most used bindings in our colouring books are what you may have heard people refer to as sewn or sometimes people call it stitch binding. And then there's also glue binding. There are other types of binding, of course, such as spiral binding, which is also sometimes called coil binding. Everything seems to have multiple names. Uh, but today we're purely going to focus on the types of binding that doesn't always fall flat when you open up your colouring book. So why does the type of binding matter? Well, let me explain. Actually, I can do one better. Let me show you. So if we take a closer look at my two copies of Mythomorphia, the yellow writing here is a US edition and another way to tell is it's missing the U in colouring. And then the red copy here is a UK edition. I've coloured only one page in the US edition, which was my first copy of this book. And I've coloured multiple pages in my UK edition. So if we just take a closer look here at both of the spines, you're going to see the difference. So this here is the result of colouring one page and without purposefully trying to break the spine of the book. And this here is a result of colouring a number of pages and purposefully breaking the spine. And if I open it up, I can show you how flat it now lays. Just like that. So the book lies nice and flat, allowing you to colour right into the centre spine there. And it also still has an intact and undamaged external spine. So the US edition is glue bound and our UK edition has what you call a section sewn binding. So what is section sewn binding? Well, it all starts with something called sections, which in the printing world are also called signatures. And these are groups of pages that are folded together. So in your book, the pieces of paper are actually the size of a double page spread, and then they're folded in half. These are then grouped together into sections. Now imagine taking each of these sections one by one and then sewing them together using a nice strong flexible thread. This thread will then go through the folded edge of the page creating a series of stitches. Now once the sections are sewn together they are then glued onto the book cover. The magic of section sewn binding lies in its durability. Those stitches will hold everything together preventing your pages from falling out even with frequent use. Section sewn binding, in my opinion, is the bee's knees of binding. So one of the most significant advantages of section sewn binding is how well it allows a book to lay flat. Now, this is essential when you're trying to color intricate details close to the spine of your book. It'll help get you into all those little nooks and crannies on your coloring page without having to battle the book's curvature too much. So you may hear people say a book is both stitch and glue bound. What they are describing is called section sewn binding. Now let's talk about glue binding. So glue binding is also sometimes known as perfect binding, depending on the type of adhesive that is used. Um, but glue binding involves applying adhesive to the spine of individual pages and then attaching them directly to the book cover. It can also be referred to sometimes as threadless binding because of the fact that it's not sewn. So glue binding is actually a cheaper, more affordable alternative to section sewn binding, which is why some publishers will make the decision to use glue binding over section sewn when printing their books. And glue binding is usually less durable in the long run, especially with frequent use. So over time, the adhesive may weaken, which is going to cause your pages to come loose or the books to fall apart. 
So how do you tell if a book is glue bound or section sewn? All you really have to do is look at the top or the bottom edge of your book from the spine. So this is a UK edition. And if you look, I'll hold it as close as I can to give you a good view there. Um, if you can see what looks like groups of folded paper here, then you have section sewn binding on your book. With this book, you can see, I think, six different sections. Um, also, if you open it to the middle of one of those sections, you're going to be able to see the stitching. So I'll hold that closer as well so you can see that. You're going to be able to see the stitching in the center and you'll see that in the center of each of the different sections now for glue binding got the us edition again you won't see any folded pages you'll be able to see individual pages stuck to the cover you can actually kind of see the adhesive here, the line of the glue. Now, I personally prefer, prefer section sewn binding in my books because I find they hold up much better than glue bound books, which I find are at higher risk of falling apart. And that is not ideal for our coloring journey, right? Um, so if you are someone who likes or wants to take your book apart, um, either to color the pages outside of the book or to have your book spiral bound maybe. It is easier, however, to take apart a glue bound book. Um, and of course, the glue bound books are usually a cheaper alternative to the section sewn as well. Um, okay, so now that you know the difference between glue binding and section sewn binding, you can make an informed choice when selecting your coloring books by choosing which binding will suit your needs best. Now let's get practical. I'm going to show you how I break in a new book using one of my uncolored Kirby Roseanne's books for my demonstration. And I'm just using Kirby for my demo as it's my videos based on his books that I usually do get this question on. Uh, now, please only practice this method if you have a section sewn bound book like this one here is. As far as Kirby books go, the UK editions are all section sewn, while the US editions are all glue bound. Now, if you are unsure if a book has glue binding or section sewn binding before you purchase it, and this is something that is important to you, then perhaps just check YouTube first for a review or a flip through. Um, I find that it doesn't really mention the type of binding when you look at the um, the book description on Amazon and such. So try and see if you can find a flip through or a review first. Um, and also remember, the more you color in your books, the more they'll lay flat as well. Okay, to break the spine gently, I open the book roughly to the middle. I'm not being precise here, um, just rough estimate. And as you can see, this is not staying completely flat. So next thing I do is I place my thumbs on this little bump here um, near the spine on either side. So one here and one here. And then I just lift and press, lift and press and walk my thumbs all the way down the length of the page. And back up again. And you can see already how flat that has made this book. Now, if you still need a little bit of extra oomph after that, if your page still isn't sitting as flat as you'd like, you can then just fold the book back on itself. So the front cover and the back are touching, just like that. And then, sit it back down. Can you see the difference? So a brand new coloring book can be a little bit stubborn. Once you begin coloring in it though, it will start to get even flatter, but look at how perfectly flat this book is already compared to the beginning. Just by doing, first of all, that little step with walking your thumbs up and down, flattened it so much, and that bend um, flattened it out completely. Now this book here is single-sided, but, um, the first page you color near the spine of a book, so if this was a double double um, page spread, you may still need to press down with your thumb. So you may see when I'm coloring, in, usually in a new book, I will press down with my thumb as I'm coloring on this side. So trying to get into the spine here, I'm pressing here 
Um, and if it's the opposite way, I flip the book all the way around because I am left-handed. So then I can press that side of the spine. Like basically just doing that. So that's when you see me flipping all my books around. Um, and you may have seen me doing this in my color alongs just to give me the best access I possibly can to get right into that spine. Now, let me show you something else. Now, as I said earlier, the more you color in a book, the flatter it will sit. So my Mythic World, which is very close to completion now, as you can see, when it opens up, it just sits so flat now. Now, part of this is due to the breaking in of the book at the beginning. It's also due to having so many pages colored um, and also from me using my thumb to hold the spine flat while I color as well. And if I can also show you my Worlds Within Worlds, this book is completed. There's a flip through of this completed book actually on my YouTube channel. Um, now this book now lays as flat as flat can be. So let me just show you something. If we flip to the sneaker page here, some of you may have been around since this. This is my very first ever color along on this channel. Um, now it's also my very first page completed in Worlds Within Worlds. And you can kind of see here um, the little white stripe near the spine. So the book wasn't this flat when I started coloring this page. Um, so therefore I wasn't able to get right into the spine. However, when you look at one of my later pages, you can see that my color is now right in the center of that spine there. So that's due to the book finally laying completely flat. And if I can show you another earlier page here, which is my Dragon's Eye page, you can now see um, this the white line. This one is probably a bit more obvious than the sneaker page. You can see the white line here, and that is where the spine was sitting like that when I was coloring the book. So now that it's completely flat, you can see this little white line. I probably should go back in and fill that in um, now. So back to glue bound books like i said before i don't personally recommend attempting to break the spines of glue bound books they can be delicate and they may fall apart on you so proceed with caution and handle them with care um, i would recommend starting off by coloring a single page in these books first rather than a double page spread one that's not too close to the spine uh, because as you color the book more it will flatten out and a single page will put um, little pressure on your glue binding rather than trying to get into the center um, of a double page spread so perhaps try um, starting in your book on a single page first and see how that goes okay so there you have it guys that is how i break in my coloring books if you found this tutorial helpful please consider giving it a thumbs up subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos until next time keep coloring and i hope you all have a wonderful day bye for now